everyone. Today I prepared a presentation to talk about what the Whole30 is. As you know, on my YouTube channel, I publish recipes every Monday and I always mention whether they are Whole30 compliant or not. So it makes sense for me to talk about what the Whole30 program is for those of you who do not know. That's what I'm gonna be doing today. So if you are interested, please stay with me and we'll go through it together. So what is the Whole30? Do you ever feel like your energy levels are inconsistent or non-existent altogether? Do you struggle to lose weight? Do you suffer from any aches and pains that you can't contribute to exercise or overuse? Do you have any conditions like skin conditions or digestive conditions, allergies, chronic fatigue? Have you tried taking medications for these and has it not helped? Could it be? that foods are causing these symptoms? Well, basically, this is what the Whole30 is all about. It, it's trying to figure out what foods affect you in a negative way. So how does it work? The Whole30 is all about you giving your body a voice and listening to it. The only way to figure out if certain foods are affecting you in a negative way is to eliminate them completely from your diet. Yeah. So during the Whole30, you eliminate certain foods for 30 days to allow your body to heal itself from anything that your foods might be causing and kind of hit a reset button. Once you've finished those 30 days, you then systematically reintroduce those foods into your diet. And the point of that is for you to compare how you felt when you weren't having those foods to when you are and see if it makes you feel better or if it makes you feel worse or if you see no change whatsoever. This program is very powerful because we read articles every day about what is good for you and what is not. One day something is great for you, the next day some people are saying, hey, I read this study, it's really bad for you. Studies contradict themselves all the time and hey they're not based on you so this tool is very powerful because it allows you to determine what is good for you and who is better equipped to decide that than you but in saying that the whole 30 does begin with science foods eliminated during the whole 30 program are foods that science suggests may play a role in promoting unhealthy cravings and habits disrupting your metabolism damaging your gut and chronic systemic inflammation. In fact, there are thousands of testimonials from Whole30 participants claiming that they have seen an improvement or even the reversal of lifestyle related diseases. It's listed in this table. You might be thinking, I don't have any of those conditions, so why would I do the Whole30? Well, how do you know that you are feeling the best possible way you could? How do you know that you couldn't feel better? Now, I have a really easy example for you. It's not related to diet, but I am really short-sighted. I have myopia and I didn't know I had myopia until one day I went to the optometrist and had some glasses made, put them on and thought, Oh my God, everything is so clear. I don't know, just an example. Perhaps you would feel better that way too after trying this diet. Up to you. You may experience some physical and psychological benefits from the Whole30. Physical include weight loss, improved body composition, consistently high energy levels, better sleep, improved focus, mental clarity, return to healthy digestive function, improved athletic performance, <coughs> what's that, sunnier disposition. Psychological benefits include sayonara to unhealthy food habits, sayonara to emotional eating, sayonara to sugar and carb cravings, and a healthier body image. Okay, so let's rip that band-aid off. What can't you eat? No grains. That means no wheat, no oats, no barley, no corn, no rice, no millet, no buckwheat, no quinoa, nothing. Ah, oh, chocolate. Yeah, guys, no more chocolate. No sugar in any shape or form, not real, so not what artificial. What I want to point out is that it's really important that when you start buying things that you look at the product you're buying and read the label. There are lots of sneaky names for sugar out there. So I'll put a link in the description below with a resource to help you spot the sneaky sugar in different products. You'll probably find that you will find sugar in lots of things that you never would have guessed had sugar in them. Yeah. 
No alcohol, guys. Not even for cooking. I don't have anything more to say about that. Calm down. Calm down. It's okay. You're going to be all right. What else? No dairy. Not goat. Not sheep. Not cow. No dairy. No legumes, yeah, that's right, no legumes. No beans, no lentils, no peas, no soy, no peanuts. No MSG, no carrageenan, no added sulfites. They're all crap anyway. No recreating baked goods or junk food with Whole30 approved ingredients. And the point of this is to eliminate the psychological addiction we may have to certain foods. I hope you're still with me now because what I'm gonna say next is important. This is only for 30 days. You're only going to do this for 30 days. It's only temporary. Um, and once the 30 days are finished, you can start to reintroduce those foods systematically following the guidelines established in the Whole30 program. And then you need to honestly assess how you feel mentally, spiritually, and physically. And you can be the judge of how those things make you feel. Okay, so what can you eat? So you can eat basic cuts of meat, seafood, eggs, vegetables, all except peas, corn, and lima beans, all fruits. You can have pickles and sauerkraut as long as you read the label and they have none of the ingredients you can't have in them. You can have coconut yogurt, again, read the label. Mm. There is more. During the 30 days, you cannot weigh yourself and you cannot measure yourself. So a good tip is to do so the day before you start your program and that will be useful because on day 31, you can step on the scale and measure yourself. It's not about weight loss. This program isn't about weight loss. It's about feeling the best you can. Sure, weight loss can be a side effect from it and it, really what you're trying to determine is how you feel and work out what is best for you and what is not. So, in a nutshell, the Whole30 is a temporary elimination program designed for you to determine for yourself what foods are good for you and which are not. It serves as a toolkit to design a diet that makes you feel your best. And it could potentially address some health issues you may be suffering from. In the description box below, I'm going to include a link to the book. I've got the Kindle version. It's called The Whole 30, The 30 Day Guide to Total Health and Food Freedom. It's a great book. It has recipes. It will tell you what to expect along the way. It talks a lot about why certain foods are eliminated. It is really a great book and it's not boring at all. It doesn't put you to sleep, it's interesting. And also a link to different additives that you should stay away from and what is okay as well. If you know anyone who has any of those conditions listed before or who might benefit from any of the information in this video, please share it with them. Sharing is caring. I'll be making a video soon about my own experience with the Whole30 as well. So if I've already published it, I'll put a card up here. Don't forget, every Monday I release a new video with me cooking and usually the recipes I make are Whole30 compliant. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys for watching. I know it was a little bit long and a different kind of video, but I hope many people will find this useful. Hit the subscribe button below and if you want to be the first person to see a video, hit the bell button too. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Mwah.